Malachi 3.10 says, Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Well, I'm going to continue to tithe the CRI, whether you like it or not. Oh. <laughs> my class does communicate rather radically with me. I never have any problem understanding what people think around here, you know. I've just got to teach you guys to be more articulate, you know, to speak your minds more freely. What greater storehouse of knowledge is there next to CRI? And we always are receiving meat from the word of, from you. Your stand on refusing to tithe is obstructing the windows of heaven and pouring out the blessings for us. <laughs> Ask your, your audience if they agree with me. God bless you. They even left a telephone number here for me to call if I want to argue. <laughs> I told you what my principle was, and that was that the local church was the equivalent of the storehouse and that you should have an obligation to your local church. That's my position on it. Now, don't you think it would be easier for me to say, tithe to CRI, urge people to tithe? It's much easier because some people taking me at my word would say, well, he's probably right. We'll give to CRI. And then what would happen to the work of the local church? You see, it's the local church that is there to minister it's the local church that baptizes, the local church that serves the Lord's Supper. Now, we are going to have the Lord's Supper here in class very shortly, as soon as I can obtain permission for it from uh, Pastor Bradford, so that we can have our Lord's Supper here, uh, because uh, a lot of people do not go over to the main auditorium afterwards, though I urge you to do so, and I have always done so. But I'd like to have the Lord's Supper here. How many of you would be in favor of that? Good. I'm glad to see that because I would be too. And if we possibly can, we're going to do that. But uh, I feel the local church has a binding. We have a, a binding obligation to our local church. I tithe to my local church in San Juan Capistrano. And I give above that to Christian Research Institute. And to many other things the Lord makes it possible for me to do when he makes it possible. And I think that's the procedure that ought to be followed. Now, it's between you and the Lord what your conscience is as to what you do. I've only stated what my own position was and why I felt that way. But there are lots of people that tithe the CRI, but they don't tell me they tithe. And so I can't send the check back. My board would probably have a hemorrhage if, I, if they knew I did that anyhow. A friend of mine has a sister who lives in Chicago. The sister's name is, okay, Susan called me the other day asking me to pray for her. She has lung cancer. She's a Christian, but for a while was hoping crystals could help her, only to the grave. She's out of that New Age gimmickry now, but since she has Christ in her heart, she has never found a church home. She's looking. Many churches are liberal. I told her she should be anointed with oil and prayed for by the elders. She's occasionally attending the Episcopal Church. Would you pray for her? Yes, we will. The doctors have stopped the chemotherapy, and she's under 100 pounds. She feels like her hope is not to be found in, in cures this world has to offer. She has tried them. Yes, there is a time to be born. There is a time to die. And there's not much when that time comes that we can do about it. It's known to God, as all things are known to him, before the foundation of the world. I've often said you can hurry things up by overeating, drinking, drugging, abusing yourself, and that's all taken into the divine plan, into consideration. But uh, in a case like this, we should pray for her, and it's in the, if she lives in the Chicago area, then she should go to Moody Memorial Church, which is a very sound gospel-preaching church right in the heart of Chicago, where she certainly will hear the gospel. And if she's having any problems about getting anointed, let her call the nearest Assembly of God Church in her area, and they will come over and pray for her or bring her to church and anoint her with oil in the name of the Lord. Uh, there, that's one church I know for sure does this. There are other churches that do also, but I'm sure of that one. But uh, we'll pray for her after the... Um, uh, service this morning. If you're worried about my voice, you have good reason to. Can you please explain one jo explain John 17, 9? The verse sounds like it's saying, Jesus only prays for believers, not for the world. I don't understand that. Well, what he's saying in John 17, 9 is, Father, I pray not for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me out of the world. That's the church that they may be in union with us, I in you, you in me, that they may be in union with us. The word one in Greek means in union with you. So what he's talking about is the unity of the body of Christ. That's very clear cut in the passage. So he says, I'm praying for the church. That doesn't say that Jesus didn't pray for the world's salvation because he said he came to save the world. 
The point is, here he's praying for the church, and he makes that very clear. But it's not to the exclusion of his prayer for mankind to be saved. This is a prayer for the church that God gave him out of the world. Read John 17 in conjunction with John chapter 6, and fits together perfectly, where Jesus says, No one can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draws him. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast him out. So it's the Father who draws it is the Son who redeems. It is the Spirit who indwells. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the seal of the covenant is the, per is the presence of the Spirit, sealed by His Spirit until the day of redemption. In D.L. <coughs> in D. L. Moody's book, Seeker Power, he talks about waiting in Jerusalem to be filled with the Holy Spirit prior to going out and effectively witnessing. Does this mean we shouldn't share the gospel until then? And... and uh, Long, how long should we wait for this indwelling? Well, Moody isn't saying that you uh, not witness. He's saying that in the case of the apostles and the early disciples of Christ, they received power from the Holy Spirit to go out and witness Jerusalem, Judea, and the utmost parts of the earth. They were indwelt, but they had not been baptized with power. Now, when a person is regenerated today, the Holy Spirit indwells them immediately, and there is power from his presence to witness. What Moody's talking about is getting more from God, more power from God, because we have this treasure of the Spirit in earthen vessels, and we leak. We lose our power. That's why we have to keep going back to the Spirit of God. That's all Moody's talking about. Incidentally, Moody's book, Secret Power, is a great Christmas gift to give to people, as are many of the books and materials that we have here. You want to do some shopping and help CRI at the same time? Right on my right, on your way out. And you can get good materials there, but Moody's book is superb to give to people, particularly people who say, well, I don't believe any of this Pentecostal nonsense. Well, just give that. Say, here's a great Pentecostal theologian and hand them Moody's book. Say, Moody's not a Pentecostal. And you say, that's right, but why don't you read what he has to say? And that's shock therapy, 202. Why is it some good Christian people are murdered? Why is it that some good Christian people are raped? Why is it that some good Christian people suffer diseases? Why is it some good Christian people are killed in wars? Because we live in a cursed civilization, in a cursed world, which will only be set right by the second coming of Jesus Christ. The miracle is that God preserves so many of us. Did you ever ask yourself how many diseases you have been spared? How many attacks? How much evil you've been delivered from in your life? How many of you ever stopped to, to think about that in, personally in your own life? Lord, how many times have I been... You see, not enough of you. You see? You just look at good health and blessings, and you say, praise the Lord for that. You ought to praise Him for what made those things possible. The cancer you didn't get. The attacks you didn't experience. The evil that you were shielded from. You don't even know anything about. I personally think that most people have horrendous diseases in the world we live in, and it's only the Holy Spirit that keeps us from being destroyed. The Christians particularly are blessed because God has, as the Scripture says, a very real personal interest in us. I'd like to go on answering questions. I think there's three left. I'll try and do them. And then I want to give uh, Hank the time that's necessary for him because he has something very important to say to us.